Um, my name is Kristen. Where did you grow up? I right. promise you I am British. He's a rainbow, triple, unicorn, cappuccino. I can offer you oatmeal and uh, vodka and that's pretty much it. That um, makes it even more interesting. Yeah, but, but aggressively curious. Oh my God, that's going to be very exciting. And these are not just an empty words. Largest pride event um, would be our governor, Ron DeSantis. No. Hi guys, my name is Katya Komarova. I'm a public relations consultant. I teach public relations at the University of South Florida and also I run a YouTube channel called The Wits and Bustle Show. Today we're at Tech Data, the largest distributor of IT products and services on Earth the second largest company in the state of Florida, 14,000 employees, presence in 40 countries, and 37 billion of annual revenue. Just to put this into perspective, that's about half of what IBM has reported for the year 2018, one third of Microsoft's revenue, and well, in non-IT company terms, that's the nominal GDP of a country like Bolivia or the Republic of Congo. And you guys, if you're still not satisfied, that's enough money to give every man, woman, and child in the United States a crisp $100 bill. So I've done some research, and it looks like there is one man at Tech Data who is playing a huge, if not the main role in driving all this change forward. His name is John Tonison, and oh my God, here he is. Hi, Mr. Tonison. How are you? Thank you. Mr. Tonison, so tell us about yourself. With a mouthful of gummy bear. That um, makes it even more interesting. All right. So, again, welcome to uh, welcome to our campus. I'm uh, um, the CIO of Tech Data. Um, that means I'm privileged to to, um, to lead the technical, digital, and innovation group of um, of this huge corporation, um, a corporation that uh, that does what we do in 40 countries across the world, the world, but is based and headquartered here in uh, in uh, Florida, in sunny Florida. Um, and uh, through my career and, and now I'm privileged to be or lead those that are using technology to make people's lives better, make businesses better and um, solve the complex things that others think can't be solved. Tech Data is a textbook example of how a company should truly embrace diversity and inclusion. And these are not just an empty words or some sort of Pride Week marketing initiative. Look at this sign right here. It has maintained a perfect 100 score on the Human Rights Equality Index. And not too long ago, the CEO of Tech Data signed a pledge. I think it's called Pledge for Diversity and Inclusion, uh -huh. right? Yep. Uh, that outlines a specific set of actions that companies commit to uh, in order to guarantee the highest level of uh, diversity and inclusion in the workplace. But before we get into that, where did you grow up? Yeah, I was born, uh, I'm born in Britain, grew up and uh, educated in Britain and uh, uh, moved out of the UK. Um, through Germany for, for three or four years and then to the US Where some 23 Britain? years ago. Uh, down in the Winchester area, Winchester, Hampshire. Oh my God, that's gonna be very exciting because I- uh, I've never call, heard anybody call Hampshire exciting before. I lived in London for four years. So let's have this conversation as a wannabe Brit with a Brit. <laughs> okay. First of all, are you more British uh, or American now? Uh, I, I, I misuse both uh, nationalities to my, uh, to my benefit. So whichever at a moment in time um, it allows me to be more outrageous or, uh, uh, or use as an excuse. I'll use it at the moment, any time. Okay, so Mr. Tonison, how do I get satisfaction from this jar? <laughs> In very, very, very thin layer. Um, Marmite's fabulous, by the way. No. It doesn't taste like how it smells, but it doesn't taste good. <laughs> it's not bad. It kind of tastes like soy sauce. Maybe I'm a Brit then. That's a no for me. Um, the, an acquired taste, quite the opposite. It's, uh, it's for those who have no sweet tooth, it's very salty, but uh, it's a, uh, uh, we'll use it on, on, on cheese with a plowman's lunch or on a slice of bread, but uh, uh, to enjoy it, satisfaction from enjoyment is a very, very thin layer as a, as a flavor. Enjoyment from watching somebody else's pain, typically an American's pain, misusing it, is let them think that it should be spread like Nutella. Um, and uh, in, in a thick quantity, it will suck all the moisture out of their body and, um, and leave them craving and desperate for uh, anything to drink. Now, I also have a Britishness test for you. 
I Ready? promise you I am British. Someone bumps into you in the street. Do you? A. Shout. Hey buddy, I'm walking here, fool. B. Think nothing of it, after all it's just part of the pavement battleground. C. Raise your palm and apologize while jumping into the road before going home to shout at the cat and weed the hell out of the garden. Well, it does depend where you are in Britain. If you're in London, you would do nothing to acknowledge any other human being existing, whatever happened. Um, I think out in the country, you'd be a bit a little politer and uh, maybe throw a coat down and, uh, and assist them on their way. Question number two. You go to make tea. Did I pronounce it right? Tea? No. How do you pronounce <laughs> tea? Tea. And you discover that you're out of milk. Do you? A. Shrug. Go to the cooler and grab a can of Pepsi instead. B. Decide to have an espresso and a couple of biscotti. No big deal. C. Desperately search around the kitchen for a milk alternative before remembering with great relief that you still have some UHT which you stole from a train. <laughs> well, now you, I, I get to reveal another subtle within Britain characteristic, which is um, uh, my, uh, my family upbringing and my family origin was out in, in Wales. And the Welsh don't drink uh, milk and tea, so I still don't drink milk and tea. I would not bother. And if you came to my house, um, I can offer you tea, but no milk. I can offer you oatmeal and uh, vodka, and that's pretty much it. So what does it mean if someone is Billy No Mates? Billy No Mates. Uh, it can also be Johnny No Mates. Um, yeah, Billy and Johnny No Mates are um, they're, they're getting through life on their own because they don't have friends around them. They don't have friends to join them. They're sitting on their own. Um, and what is it when you say something is bloody? Bloody? Um, it's a very, very gentle expletive. It's, uh, it's, it's perfectly acceptable in uh, PG-13, or uh, as, as, as my team here will tell you, even in the workplace. Um, no, it's, uh, it, it's extremely, or it's irritating. It's ex extremely something, or, or maybe it's an irritating indication. Well, you're doing so far so good on the <laughs> Britishness test. And finally, my final question, queuing. Sure. What's the proper code of conduct when you're queuing? Well, no, British, we queue for everything. Um, gives you time to figure out what's going on and generally make friends. And uh, no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no situation for direct access that a Brit doesn't look for an opportunity to stand behind somebody else first. Well, when it comes to embracing diversity and inclusion, you're definitely not standing in the queue. <laughs> I must say, you're making quite a splash. We try. So that decision to sign the uh, to sign the pledge for the for diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. could you take us through uh, whose decision it was? Did it have to get board approval? Um, yeah, so, so the, the CEO pledge, so it's, it, it is a, specifically it's the CEO pledge, and if you go and look, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the, the top officers of the corporations that put their names to it. So it's, uh, it's, it's my boss, um, Rich Hume, who, who, who signed that. But uh, he did so in a context of a, of a company here that's some 44, 45 years old at this point, um, where our original founder set us on a course for um, very progressive, very inclusive, attitude towards um, uh, to our, our talent base and to our, our policies and our attitude from the get-go. And, uh, and we've honored that for a long time. Maybe about five or six years ago, we started to, um, uh, prompted a little bit by some of our vendor partners, recognize that our duty might go a little further than just doing the right thing, but by um, demonstrating it to others and, and stepping into a leadership position um, to, uh, to, to show um, the, 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 the moral and the economic value of, of, uh, of, of ingraining these kinds of attitudes and policies ourselves. So we move from being uh, strong DNI advocates and living, living the promise for a great deal of time. So over the last six years, we really have gone much deeper into making sure that, it's, uh, that we, 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 we recognize our leadership position. We created a DNI organization within the, uh, the human resources function. Uh, we built out a series of business resource groups to, to help lead us and, and guide us in those areas. And it's in that context that the CEO pledge came along. We'd just taken a, a we'd had a change of CEO. Uh, Rich took over from, from the, the previous retiring CEO last June. And um, uh, really quickly, Rich signaled straight away that he was um, as committed to those core values and to that part of our DNA as anybody that had come before. And, uh, you know, willingly, took that leadership position and, and signed it on all our behalfs and committed us um, by doing so. And uh, not a board decision, although if you know the pledge, 
one of the four dimensions of the pledge is that we do raise the DNI discussion and the DNI's plan to the board level discussion. But I think the, 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 the big changes in the short term we're gonna see is I, I do expect that that fourth element of the pledge, which is to take this to be a, a planned discussion with our board of directors will happen. Um, uh, I do think that we'll uh, expect to see that the leadership position we've taken um, to other businesses in the community will be, will be carried now as a torch also by our CEO, mm -hmm. as well as his direct officers who have been doing that for him. Um, and actually, as recently as last week, it sounds kind of contrived as we do this conversation now, but this is, this is, this is real. Um, as recently as last week, we gathered um, our top leadership from around our globe. And I mm -hmm. said earlier, we're a uh, 40, 40 country, 40 countries, yeah. Um, but we brought in our top 88 leaders. Um, and they, they're, they're not just our rank leaders, but they're our thought leaders, our, uh, our movers and shakers is identified as a cohort of leadership, um, global leadership group. And we bring them together every year. We brought them together last year, uh, last week, sorry, here in, in Clearwater. And um, our CEO signaled very, very clearly um, an expanded expectation of, of all of us as leaders. Um, he adding in on top of our corporate strategy, adding in on top of our, our leadership behaviors, which are our core things that we, that we uh, cascade and we reinforce. He added an expectation and a focus globally on, on DNI. Um, and uh, that, was, that was the first time that that would have been heard in all of the edges of our corporation by all of our countries and operations. <clears throat> um, and one of the three external speakers in that um, two-day conference um, was a, uh, a neuroscientist and a research professor, um, Dr. Vivian Ming. Um, and, and, and her message to us was very, uh, based on an awful lot of really solid research data, um, was about uh, unconscious bias, which is, of course, one of the one of the tenets and one of the. Uh, what would be an example issues. of unconscious bias? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, un unconscious bias uh, is 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 a. I think it's a body of of uh, you know, human, the human condition, and and, a, and and as Vivian Ming was explaining of, uh, of 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 some very deep research studies, just to indicate that that even at at our most advanced moments, when we believe that we're processing data objectively. Um, uh, and, and scientifically, uh, it, it is most common that we are still using some lenses and filters and, and, and preconceptions in order to most efficiently, efficiently digest that information. Um, and it can exist in all kinds of, of, of um, objective interpretation of data. Um, but, but the particular discussion here was around its implications on um, hiring, on recruiting, on development, on, uh, on leadership skills. I was just going to ask you about that. Do you think that <coughs> discrimination based on gender or based on sexual orientation or, I don't know, hairstyle uh, still exists when it comes to hiring in tech? You'd think that in tech it shouldn't matter. Yeah, tech's a pretty advanced, um, you know, it, 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 it progressive industry for sure. And I think we, uh, partly because of the age of the industry, um, partly because the, uh, the absolute physical diversity of where the, the invention comes from, it's probably more naturally um, leaning towards more open-minded and complete, but uh, no, but, but for sure, it's, it's, we're, we're still humans running these businesses and, uh, and, and we bring with us uh, our experiences, we bring in with us our biases from, from all aspects of our lives, not just the, the industry we're in. Um, so I think it would, be, it would be foolish to imagine that we don't have work to do in this space as much as, as, as any. Um, and uh, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's unquestionable that the, the, uh, the depth of, of uh, uh, female technical talent um, is, a, is a still a challenge mm -hmm. to, to all of us. We mm -hmm. look at that empirically. Uh, I think all businesses look at it, uh, look at it uh, periodically. We look at it and understand the balance. And um, while, um, while we should be proud as a company of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of the DNI standards and the DNA that we've got, um, unquestionably, we've still got work to do in in those areas for sure. I just saw this this past week in the Guardian, uh, the British newspaper, um, a, a study that indicated that um, social acceptance of um, same-sex relationships um, had, for the first time since the 80s, since the the uh, since the AIDS crisis, um, had seen a downturn in in social acceptance in a in a country that one I would. You know, m consider was uh, was very very uh, advanced and progressive and, and inclusive. But no, I think we, I that? think our challenges are, uh, 
you know, I think our, our, our planet goes through, um, you know, phases of, uh, of, of, of growth and, and economic advancement, and it goes through uh, phases where it, uh, it, it, it starts to be more concerned about the, the, the future of, of a particular community or a particular country. And, and we, we historically, history shows us, we see swings of, of, of open-mindedness, and then we see some swings the other way. And I think there are a number of our number of countries are, are experiencing right now probably a little bit of a swing um, away from some of the, uh, the more open-minded um, states of mind that we've had before, and we have to be very cautious not to lose ground that we've already we've already gained in the uh, in the advancement of of DNI. When I started looking into tech data as uh, promoting diversity and inclusion issues, it's hard not to notice your personal role because while many companies stand for these values, you seem to be an advocate and a very vocal supporter of these issues. Uh, I've seen your uh, testimony to uh, in Tallahassee. Mm. Um, in support of the um, Bill 120, right? Uh, workforce competitive, competitive Workforce Act, yeah. So do you sometimes feel that it may lead to some unintended consequences for you or the company, your customers in many countries? Um, I mean, I'm sure there are unintended consequences of kind of any, of taking any strong position on anything. That's that's for sure. I'd be foolish to think, other, to think otherwise. Um, I would say uh, I, I and, and this company um, firmly believe that the, the most powerful and effective um, contribution of any colleague is, is when they're the, their authentic self. Um, and I take that, that thought a little further and say, I think a company is going to be most effective when it is also clearly its authentic self um, to, for it not to be clear who you're doing business with, um, I, I think is in, a, is in an effective way to go to market. Um, Taking these these positions on the importance of diversity of of thought of experiences the the core idea that our business is better and our society is better with with the wisdom of crowds with 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 diverse ideas and differing and challenging opinions is core to our DNA. It's in who we are, um, and uh, uh, it would be it would be it would be wrong for, for our customers, for our partners, um, for our community to not to know who we are as a, as, a, as a company. So I think we feel very, very comfortable being our authentic selves as a company and saying that out loud. Yes, they, they'll, they'll be, there can be unintended consequences, but I expect those to be a mix of, of the good and the bad. Do you ever, uh, see any, I would say, not resistance, but maybe alternative views from within the company that guys, maybe we should embrace something safer environment, something bipartisan, instead of going full frontal on this? Uh, well, we're, 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 um, we're equally embracing and, and taking the charge on some um, corporate social responsibility dimensions as well. Um, so we're, we're, not a, we're not a one trick pony in, in that sense. That'll be in there somewhere. Um, uh, we are conscious that, um, that, that, that we've made some, uh, some, some very visible advances in dimensions of, of, of DNI in our, in our communities. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and our intention is not to, to do those in a one-sided way. Our intention is to, to lift the whole um, cause and representation of, of, of underrepresented groups. Um, so we're conscious of if, if we get that balance a little off and, and our approach has been, and again, this is led from our, from our CEO, our approach is not to tap down any of those mm -hmm. efforts. It's to supercharge the ones that maybe aren't um, at the same clip rate and having the same kind of impact. So. Um, we're conscious of making sure there's a balance in this area so that all aspects and all areas of DNI are, uh, and, and all underrepresented groups um, get the same attention and get the same show of love from us. Okay, let's move on from uh, big issues and talk a little bit about Pride. So as you know, it's been a Pride month in June and virtually every company slashed a rainbow and consumer, not so much consumer, even Marmite had a rainbow Marmite that you could oh, really? personalize. Yes, I wanted to order you one, but it I couldn't missed. be delivered in time. You could have said JT. It, it lasts forever. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think this will exist after the apocalypse. <laughs> Probably. So how do you feel about companies feeling like this is a marketing opportunity and just slashing the rainbow on their product without necessarily the deeper support? Um, I haven't thought too hard about it. I think uh, it, it is as we strive to cause attention and cause conversations, 
cause people to have difficult conversations and for those difficult conversations to be way less difficult because of familiarity. Uh, I, th I think drawing the attention and any of the devices that, that cause um, there to be discussion, there to be attention, there to be a catalyst um, for change uh, is, is a good thing. However, however it comes, whether it comes from deeply seated, well-intended, deliberate, or it comes from, from just supportive collaboration, I don't think that matters too much. The, the, the important thing is, 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 as a nation and as a society, um, we are clearly signaling um, you know, our respect and our inclusion and our, our welcoming, our welcome to, uh, to, to, to these particular underrepresented groups. So you would say LGBT community would not be offended if a company just does nothing to support them, but then suddenly launches a rainbow, triple unicorn cappuccino. Um, I think I've had one of those, <laughs> like 12,000 calories. Um, I, you know, I've seen, like, like you, I've seen evidence of, of, of the community can, can, can bristle at that if they, if they sense mm -hmm. it. Um, so um, I, I think it's a, it's a consideration, um, but personally, I, but I still, um, welcome uh, a, a, a progressive motion by businesses and societies and, and, and communities and politicians um, s stepping up and stepping out and saying that they're willing and, and welcome to be identified with the, uh, the, the underrepresented group. That's, at the end of the day, that's got to be better than the alternative. Hi, my name is Becky. I'm a senior at USF. And my question is, how do you plan on keeping tech data progressive and ahead of the game when it comes to things like diversity and inclusion in an authentic way? Cool question from Becky, thank you. Um, I, I think the, 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 the most effective way and, and maybe, maybe the only sincere way is, is, to, is, is to live it and show it, um, is to, to be both taking the stands in the community um, and, and, and making sure that we show up in the places that the underrepresented groups expect us to show up, want us to show up, want us to, want to, to, to add our voice um, you know, to their mission and their cause, uh, but then to, to demonstrate it through who you see at the leadership table, um, who you see speaking on behalf of the company and, and the, issues that, uh, the, the issues that we include in the way that we go to market and the way we attract and, and develop talent. I just think the company has to, uh, it needs to do the right thing and be in the right places, but most of all, it just needs to actually live it um, and, uh, and, and, and have a, a leadership team and a, and a workforce that, that truly represents a diversity of experiences, beliefs, and values. And at the end of it, the, the accidental superpower that comes out of it is we will actually just be better. Our ideas will be better pressure tested. They'll be better socialized. They'll be, they'll be more, um, they'll be more portable. They'll be more uh, scalable. Um, I, I, I hope now, and I hope going forward increasingly, that as a company that will be will be visible in every interaction that you have with us, and as you walk around our halls, and as you you work with us as a customer. So this is a question from Kristen, one of my best students, by the way. Hello, um, my name is Kristen, and my question for you today is that I know that tech data um, plays a really big part in LGBTQ pride and, um, you know, just LGBTQ issues as a whole. So I want to know what has been your most um, gratifying project that you've worked on with the LGBTQ community? I think the, it, it's difficult to, it's difficult to, to, to say it's not the, the strength of support that we took to to Pride in uh, here in Florida this uh, this this past June um, because of the scale and the size of it, but actually the whole the whole business resource group that um, created itself, created its space, created its mission, and then led us to that particular um, uh, set of actions, but a whole series of other actions for. For, for, for including and understanding um, the, the, uh, the affinity group. The, 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 the creation of that business resource group, I think is probably you know, deep down inside the, the, the strongest pride in that area for me, the, the, uh, uh, the most impactful thing. But the outward appearance of it has to be that, uh, that this past month, mm -hmm. um, you know, I walked with, with 1,200 of my colleagues. Um, and let's be clear, that was not 1,200 affinity group. <laughs> 
um, that would be statistically um, unlikely for, uh, for, for, for this location. But work with 1,200 colleagues who were there to, to signal their absolute support acceptance and to lift the, um, you know, the value of the self-worth and, and the relevance of their LGBT colleagues and their, their colleagues who, who have LGBT families uh, and, and consider them part of that community. That was a, that was a surprise. That was a, a physical show of support that I haven't seen um, before. Um, and um, that was a tough one to shake off and, and move on from. Like a thousand people, I think, from Tech Data actually marched. 1,200, yeah. 1,200. <laughs> yeah. And then you had 40% of your senior leadership also marching. Yeah, I heard it was a huge number of, of, the, uh, of the directors and executive positions were, were, were with us. I'll tell you that I was, uh, we had two floats. We, we bound um, our, our part of the parade front and back with two floats. And I, I, I walked with the first float and on the float at one point. And I looked back expecting to see the other float and I could never see it. It was, it was so far back. And, uh, you know, that's, a, that's, that's, that's our colleagues here who, who gave up their weekend to do that. That's a very good note because the next question is from Zina, and I think she talks about the parade. So I read online that he supports inclusivity and youth groups, which I think is awesome. But I guess my thoughts are, is rebranding this nationwide movement that's supposed to be for the LGBTQ community and rebranding it, you know, to fit and like put his corporation on the spotlight. Um, I just want to hear from him if that's being inclusive and what his thoughts are on that. Yeah, a pointed question. Um, late in the interview, I would have expected that earlier, um, and a, and and a fair one. Um, we you know we we certainly saw um, you know some 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 side conversations and con, and, and concerns with that, and um, I, I I'll I'll say uh, you know message heard um, the the reality of how um, that branding went down kind of tells the whole story without needing not needing much color. And the uh, and um, and the fact that uh, that it, it it created some concern about um, you know corporate um, roles and 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 appropriation you know has has got our, our attention and we'll we'll be conscious of it. But the Pride organization came to us. Um, we'd we'd been I think three years previously um, uh, in a sponsorship position mm -hmm. in the Pride organization. Um, and before that, we hadn't even marched with. So we really had gone from, I think, the first time we went, I remember being there with less than 100 colleagues. And then this past month, I was there with substantially over 1,000 colleagues. The Pride organization had come to us and said, hey, we'd like you know, even more financial support from you. And what we'd like to offer you is a title sponsorship for that. And um, we were excited to, to take a leadership position, excited to once again uh, in our community, take the lead and set a standard for the other other businesses to say, no, no, it's 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 right, it's perfectly okay. Here's the air cover. Everyone, get on board. Sure, we'll take the top level of sponsorship. And um, the Pride organization had, had made it the title sponsorship. I think they'd done that because they'd also and already sold a presenting sponsor sponsorship. So they were figuring out how to get uh, maybe the same kind of sponsorship twice. And um, we were fine to go along with it. I didn't hadn't thought too hard about the the the, uh, the syntax of, mm -hmm. of where names appear. Um, actually, you'll notice in our own messaging, we never actually did in our messaging. We never said mm -hmm. um, it was uh, the Tech Data um, uh, St. Pete Pride parade. Um, but um, we saw that feedback, got that feedback along the way. The net impact of our participation was incredibly positive. Um, I I hope that um, that, uh, that 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 everyone feels that uh, that our participation is is is, a, is an additive and, and signals support and i suspect both we and the pride organization will alter the way that uh, sponsorship is done next year um just to avoid that because there's there's no intention to cause anybody discomfort there's certainly no cultural misappropriation going on this is a company that that wants our community to know um that that we are open for business that we are proud of 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 our diversity and inclusion DNA, and that uh, if there is there's talent in this area and there's tech talent in this state, um, then whatever whatever their belief systems, their origins, their ethnicity, their uh, their race, their orientation, um, this is this is the, the the best gig. They they need to be uh, they need to be seeking us out, and uh, we want to include them in our solution. Um, but uh, we appreciate the feedback we saw, and uh, I suspect. 
I suspect both us and the Pride organization will, will uh, adjust slightly going forward. The proudest moment of your career? Um, I don't know if it's a moment. I, I, I think the thing that I look back on most and get the most pride on, from over, over long periods of time is, is a handful of people whose IT careers I conspired to start with them. People that I uh, was a, were able to entice um, out of some other career into IT um, or, uh, or I was at least there while they were trying to break into IT. And then years and years later, they are just amazing, kick-ass people forging great careers, leading companies, making a difference in, in all sorts of areas of technology. And to, to, to have them just you know, give a nod and acknowledge that, that, um, that I was some part of that, I think is, is probably the most kind of humbling part. I don't know if it's a moment, I think it's a, it's a, it's a small number of people, but it's a, it's a very important part of, of, uh, of, of, of why I do what I do and, so and why I've enjoyed it. I guess, I think that probably, uh, that seems a little more formal um, um, but, uh, than, than, it, than it probably has been. I think it's, it's, it's more been, uh, you know, it's a commitment to other people. It's a, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a love of watching somebody's excitement for a career um, catch fire and then turn into something, something amazing. Speaking about uh, inspiring others, your advice to the next generation. Counsel to young is, is, is always in this workplace, from this workplace perspective, is uh, be passionate about, about knowing why. And, and, I, and I really do in why mean everything. Every time in, a, in your career, early on there, you see something, you hear something, you're part of something and, and it doesn't all make sense to you. A, a, a well-placed passion to understand it, get behind it, ask the five whys, kind of build the context of, of, of how what you do, you do influences, impacts and, and, and bleeds into the rest of, 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 of the ecosystem. Uh, I promise pays off massively through the rest of your career. You, you, you get ahead, you build this body of knowledge that probably doesn't pay off in the first few years, but then 10 years later, you suddenly will just find that you know more about the overall um, uh, molecule of the business, the overall um, genetics of a business than the people that along the way did, did the job, met the job descriptions, put in the hours, got the, got the awards, got the promotions, but didn't understand the context. That will pay off in spades. To, um, to stay curious, basically. Yeah, but, but aggressively curious. Um, it's 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 um, you know I, it's it's part of my DNA and it's it's worked very well for me. Is I can't go to sleep at night. I through the day I I take notes of of things to do clearly, but I also take notes of things I didn't fully understand, and and I won't sleep until I've I've gone and understood them and, and researched them. And it's 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 worked for me. It's a the lack of curiosity or the passion for for knowing is something that I you know I can see as a limitation in in parts of the workforce. So I strongly encourage. You know our, our our younger colleagues and uh, you know our, our next our next leaders to follow that path. Now the most I've kept the hardest part of the interview to the end. I've spoke to Luke Blankenship and he said that he's gearing up for 2020 already and he's so so busy. So now it is our task to pick out the next headliner for St. Pete 2020 huh. music wise. And we oh, can music. yes, and you know uh, we can we can pick whoever we want because obviously money is not an issue. So, Luke Blankenship shared some feedback. Now, I want to hear from you. <laughs> I should never be questioned on musical choices. They all, uh, uh, they probably will hark back to an era where the performers are dead. So I'll, I'll, For I'll, I'll cheat. I'll cheat uh, because we're not going to get Judy Garland there. There are some practical, <laughs> there are some practical challenges to uh, to getting her there. She, she, she died in Chelsea some time ago. Um, I'm going to cheat and answer your question. Um, maybe with a little more of a political edge um, on the DNI subject and say, I think the most powerful front face that we could get for Florida's largest pride event um, would be our governor, Ron DeSantis. He can't sing. Do you know this? I don't think we should let him try. Give it, let's give it a shot. Fine, 
Governor DeSantis, I hope you accept this challenge. We cannot wait to meet you. In the meantime, as a warm up for Governor DeSantis, uh, Beyonce, Madonna, Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, I would just love to meet Beyonce, so bring her on. Thank you so much. Oh my God, that was so oh, great. Thank you're you so welcome. much. Thank you. This is Woods and Bustle. My name is Katya Komarova, and I run this show.